Hi, my name is David Fraser. I'm a privacy internet and technology lawyer with the Canadian law firm McGinnis Cooper. I also teach internet and media law at the Schulich School of Law at Dalhousie University. This video is going to be short because I want people to hear all of it. I promise, no fluff, just important information. Those of us who are active on social media often see postings about missing people, and I think anyone with a heart would immediately think about how they can help. That's the greatest impulse, and I don't want to throw cold water on that, but I want people to understand how they can best help without actually contributing to the harm that they may not be aware of. We should think of the privacy interests of people who are reported missing. When you see a social media post about someone who is missing, they may not actually be missing in the way that you think. But generally, all we know is that someone has reported them missing and the police are trying to find them. If the police are thinking about these sorts of things, they will have already turned their minds to whether a social media campaign may actually be of assistance. People go missing, or more accurately are reported as missing, for a number of reasons. We tend to imagine the worst, and unfortunately that can sometimes be the case. The concern is naturally heightened when you're dealing with a child who is perhaps a victim of abduction or may have gotten lost. Seniors who may be experiencing dementia can also get lost and are inherently vulnerable. Hopefully the person will be found safe and sound and will be able to get on with their lives. But what sometimes happens is that all the postings on social media make it harder for that person to actually get on with their life. Every time I see a missing person posting on social media, I'm reminded of a friend of mine. He was pretty well known here in the community. There was a whole lot going on in his life and on social media. It was really getting to him and he really needed a break to recharge. So he decided to just unplug. I think he went to a friend's cabin in the woods and just turned off his phone. It may have been the best few days of his life without the cacophony of his phone constantly pinging. Now, if his phone had been plugged in, it would have pinged incessantly that weekend. He didn't tell his family or his friends that he was going off the grid and they naturally worried about him. Before long, there were tweets speculating about his mental health and then tweets speculating that he may hurt himself. Genuine concern snowballed into something that is hard to imagine. After he had decompressed, he turned his phone on and everything he tried to escape was orders of magnitude worse. Every tweet was likely well-intentioned, but holy crap, he was overwhelmed even after that time off, even worse, and I can hardly imagine what it felt like. All this is to say that well-intentioned sharing on social media intended to find someone and ensure their safety can become a digital legacy that can live on far beyond the time they're missing. And for some, that time of being missing may be the worst time of their life that will take a long time to recover from. But the social media posts will live on and make it harder for them to resume their normal life. Anyone who puts the name of my friend into a search engine will see a bunch of stuff from when people thought he was missing. A number of years ago, I was contacted to be interviewed by a very smart person who was doing research on behalf of a British police agency about best practices for social media campaigns when someone is reported missing. I learned a lot from her final research. There are a bunch of things that police can and should do to protect people who are reported missing while actually helping to find them. First of all, social media campaigns should only be used where there's a good likelihood that they'll actually help. This may be the case for most missing persons cases, but perhaps not all. The second thing is that the police and concerned people should only share personal information that's necessary to help find the person. That's the purpose of the campaign. It's not about creating news. So many police agencies will only share the first name and photo of a missing child, for example. Someone who sees him can say, are you Jimmy? People are worried that you're missing. His last name is not necessary to have that interaction and the social media footprints will be obscured. The third thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is that responsible police agencies and concerned people will delete any tweets or social media postings that refer to the missing person by name once the person has been found. That helps reduce the amount of content out there that lingers for long after it's relevant. I've seen some police agencies include the person's name in a posted image and not the text of the tweet to make it harder to appear when searched later. Remember, a social media campaign connected to a person reported missing has only one purpose, to find that person. I encourage people to amplify and add to the campaign in their communities where it can help. But once the person is found, and hopefully they will be, it has served its purpose. And undeleted tweets, social posts, media articles, and the like that remain after they are found may cause them harm. It may even add to whatever circumstances caused them to be missing in the first place. Responsible police agencies, and at least those that have turned their minds to it, will delete their tweets and social posts that refer to the missing person after they're found. In my area, the Halifax Regional Police and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police follow these best practices. When they post on social media about a missing person, I will often share their original post. 
This way, when they delete their original posting, my repost disappears or will be emptied of any content that could later harm the missing person. I understand the impulse to help when someone's missing. If a responsible agency has determined a social campaign is called for, please help amplify it. That's the whole purpose of the campaign. But don't speculate and don't pile on any discussion about the reasons why the person may be missing. If they're found, please delete any content that identifies them by name. If that agency follows the best practices I've mentioned, just amplify their original posting. When the person is found, that content goes to. I hope this has been interesting and useful. I try to put out a new video every few weeks or so, so if you're interested in this sort of content, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Also leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for other topics to cover. And of course, feel free to share this with anyone who you think may be interested in hearing about Canadian tech and privacy law. Thanks for tuning in.